this video we're going to go over chapter five and six. Now five and six um, are five is a pretty short chapter so that's why we're doing it all together with six. So for this you're going to need to open up two of your own photos. You can either go to open here. You can also find them in your finder or file viewer and open it up there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pick a couple photos. I'm going to pick this one and by holding down command I can pick a second one. And now I can either drag and drop them over into Photoshop. I can also right click, go to open with and click Adobe Photoshop. All right, and so because they're raw files, they did automatically open up in Camera Raw. Um, <clears throat> both of these images are pretty well exposed, and there's not any huge issues I need to take care of. Let's take a look at this. Isn't it too bad? Maybe I'll bring down the highlights just a little bit, uh, and then maybe just the shadows for that little area inside just a little bit. Uh, but that's all I'm going to do for this photo. Now I'm going to go ahead and um, hold down shift and click on this first one and then hit open to open them both in Photoshop. If you opened up JPEGs, it probably did not open up in Camera Raw, I just went into Photoshop. So let's click open. Okay. Alright, so here's the first photo we're going to be working on. I'm going to minimize this. All right, and so now that we're in here, let's go ahead and start with the first one. Um, so we've learned how to crop a couple times, so here we're going to crop again. You can hit C to get the crop tool. Remember, if you hold down on here, it'll tell you what the keyboard command is, and there it is, C. And now we can click and drag to crop. You can also crop to a specific size by coming right up here. Let's say I was going to do an 8 by 10 print. 4 by 5 is the same aspect ratio as uh, 8 by 10. So I can change that. If I wanted it to actually go horizontal instead, I can click these little arrows and it'll change it. And then I can move around, take these um, corners. If I wanted to move it this way, I could do that. Whichever way you like. Okay, next we're going to change the grid. So right up here we have our grid options. We have the rule of thirds, which is what it's on right now. You can also do a grid like this, diagonals, triangles. And so this is all just a kind of um, different compositional ways to crop. So if you had some elements that were hitting these points, how to get them just right in that place. You even have a spiral, golden spiral thing happening here. So this is all a preference type of thing and you might not even really be too concerned about this until you get a little bit deeper in photography, but just so you know that's where that is. Alright, to straighten a crooked photo, again this is it's very similar to what we've done before. There's this real little ruler right here. And let's say we had a horizon going across. I can click and drag. And wherever I click and drag that line, it's going to change it so that it, that it is straightened according to that line. I'm going to hit this little back key to go backwards to where I started. OK, so that's the basics of the crop tool there. I'm going to go ahead and you can either just hit return to keep the crop or you can hit this little check mark. If you decide not to crop at all, you can also hit this no, this little cancel sign. So hit the check mark. Now you're going to go into image size. So for image size, there's a couple different ways we can go. There is a command option I or a PC control alt I, which will bring up this box automatically. We can also go up to image and image size. Now from here you can resize this according to some different dimensions. It's set to pixels right now. I'm going to change this to inches. 
And so let's say I wanted to see, wanted to do a different print. Let's put in 10 inches. And if I wanted to do this at 10 inches, the height would end up being 6.667. It automatically changes because these two are locked together into um, to keep the same ratio no matter what. You can also change the resolution. If I was going to put this on the, on the web, on line, I would usually go with 100. And so it keeps that 10 by 6.667, but you have a different re resolution. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel because I don't really want to change any of this, but this is really helpful um, when we get in later on, and especially if you start saving stuff for online or for certain sizes to print. All right, next page we have rotate the crop. So if I want to go back into crop, I can hit C. And now if I pull out from the edge, now I can actually turn and rotate it as I want. I'm going to hit no. If I want to crop from the center, all I have to do is press and hold down the option key while I start to crop. So I'm going to hold down the option key and it will go in from the center however I want. If I want to keep the ratio, I have to hold Option and Shift and it will keep the same ratio. Okay, my book went away. There it is. If I wanted to add a white space around my image, I can use the Command Option C for Mac to get to this canvas size or I can do for PC Control Alt C or you can come back up here to image, canvas size. And so let's say I wanted to print this with um, an inch border. If I switch this to inches, it says that this is 15.36 inches right now. So if I go ahead and put in 16, and then put in 11, and hit OK, I now have a one inch border all the way around my image. Nice. Um, you can also decide to do some other, if you wanted to add a border to just one side or want to just extend it to one side, I can go to image, canvas size, and let's say I wanted to add a couple inches just on the right, let's say five inches, five plus 16 is 21, so I'm going to go 21. And down here, if I click on the side, it's only going to extend out to this side. So if I hit OK. Now I just added it over here to the side instead. I'm going to hit undo so I can keep my one inch all the way around. Command Z for undo. To crop away stuff outside the edges, um, <clears throat> this isn't going to be something that is really going to help right now on this, but later on it will become useful. You can basically select what's here and then crop so that anything that's outside of this area actually goes away. So I'm not going to worry about that today, but this is the page you might want to come back to later on in the semester. Alrighty, change the shading outside of my order, my border. Alright, so I've got my crop tool up and then up in the options bar, which is always up here, this is your options bar. You can click on the second icon next to straighten, which is this. And then you can play around with the opacity. So this is really going to be for the area when you're cropping. So let's say I want to pull this here. And now that's changing the opacity of the areas that I'm cropping out. So that can just be helpful for visualizing what you're doing. I clicked away and it did that crop. I really don't want to keep that crop. I'm going to hit Command Z. All right, that was all of Chapter 5. So you can go ahead and take a screenshot. Keep this, um, keep this open because you're going to need it for the next chapter. And for now, I'm going to go ahead and save. File. I'm going to hit Save going to bring up this dialog box. I want to change this to PSD, I'm sorry, Photoshop, 
So it has that PSC ending. I'm going to change the name to Redondo underscore chapter five. And then you can go ahead and save it in a different um, folder if you'd like to on your computer. If you're keeping all of your chapter files together, that's probably the best bet. So I'm going to go ahead and come over to, let's see, mm -mm -mm -mm, where do I have it? I have it here, desktop. And I'm going to save it in my folder for this chapter. Now if I wanted to save it to go online, I can go back up here, file, save as, change this to JPEG, and save. That JPEG dialog box is going to come up. This is 14.9 megabytes. I'm going to go ahead and take this down a bit, go down to about one megabyte. and you can hit OK now. Now there is another way we can do this now that we've gone over image size. You can actually come up here to image size and this is so you have a little bit more control. And if you see up here, it gives me the, um, what they think the image size, uh, the file size is gonna be here. So I'm gonna change this. I'm gonna go to inches and I'm gonna go ahead and put in 10. Then I'm gonna put in 100. And right here it's telling me it's going to be about 1.97 megabytes. So let's go ahead and take this down a little bit further. Let's go 5. And now that's 503 kilobytes. That'll work too. Really depending on how big it's going to be on your website or on social media, it's going to tell you what you're going to do with this, but this is good for now. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And you're like, wow, that's really small. Well, if we come down here, this is actually showing us 16.67%, the percentage of how big the file actually is. If I go ahead and zoom in a bit, that number down there is changing. So now it's at 100%. So if I put this online, this is how big it would actually be. Now I can come over here and go to File, Save. And when I save as a, oops, oh, I didn't mean to save with the PSD. I'm going to hit... Uh, 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 undo. I'm going to go back. Do this again real quick. Sixteen point six seven percent. Let's go ahead and that's going to be a hundred percent right there. File, save as. And now I'm going to go ahead and go to JPEG. And JPEG, when you save as a JPEG file, it does compress the file down a little bit. So when I hit save, we have 9.41. That's still fine. I could take it lower if I want. We'll leave it there and hit OK. All right. So now let's go ahead and move on to uh, Chapter 6. And we're going to be talking all about layers. Layers is really what Photoshop is about and what makes it different than just working in camera raw. This is so that you can build up images, have different elements, put them on top of each other. Um, you learned already a little bit about this when you played around in chapter one. So now we're going to do a little bit more. So create a new blank layer or delete one. We have um, the new blank layer icon is down here. It looks a little different now. It's now a plus sign. So if I hit this, I now have a new blank layer right here. If I need to reorder my layers, I'm gonna make another one real quick. Plus sign. All I have to do is click, drag, pull it down, and they move. So you can see there's like a little blue line. So when I click on here, I'm dragging it, this little blue line comes up between layer one and background, and I let go, and now it's between there. If I don't want to see a layer, I can take a little eyeball and turn it on and off. Now we're not seeing, there's nothing on this layer, if you can see right here, it's just some white and gray boxes to show you that there is a layer, but there's nothing actually on these layers right now, so you're not going to see a huge difference at this point. 
Alright, so to move a layer from one document to another, I'm going to go ahead and come back over here and I did a couple steps, so I went ahead and stepped back in the history panel. I want to move this here and I'm going to go ahead and double click on this lock to unlock it. Whoops, if this comes up, go ahead and hit cancel. We'll get to that later. And we're going to go up here to layer, duplicate layer. And then we're going to tell it where to go to. So we want it to go to McKinley Grove. That's my other doc, my other photo that's open right here. And I'm going to click OK. Now when I come back over here, that layer is there. And you'll notice it's really small. That's because I had done that resizing. So if I wanted to bring it, bring it in full resolution as it was before, I can go ahead and come back here. I'm going to go ahead and step back a little bit to before I resized it. Okay, nice and big, lots of pixels. And now I'm going to do the same. I'm going to come here to Layer, Duplicate Layer. I'm going to tell it to go to McKinley Grove, hit OK. And now it is here full size. Now here's that other layer, the smaller one. If I click and drag it, you see that little blue line comes up. And now it's on top of the bigger layer. I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of it actually. I'm going to hit minus. Now, um, if I get my move tool up, I can go ahead and move this around so um, I can get it right in the center. And I'm actually going to move it underneath this background layer. And again, to unlock a background layer, you just have to click on this little lock. And then I'm going to click on the background copy, click and drag down. That little blue line is underneath. Now it's underneath there. When I turn off this layer, you'll see that this layer is still there. Turn it back on and it covers it up. All right, blending current layers is something that is really fun and you can do all kinds of artistic stuff and practical stuff. Um, it's called, we're actually going to be using what's called uh, blend layer modes. So right up here it says normal and I'm going to click on this top layer that's sitting above here and I can change how this layer is blending with the one underneath. So when I come here to normal, I can um, mouse scroll whatever down and you will be able to see how they're going to change and interact with each other. Multiply, darken, all of these have a darkening effect. Then we have a lighting effect. So it's saying um, with the darkening ones, it's saying that it's going to blend and sh blend the areas in and keep the areas in that are dark. With the lightning, lightning stuff, it's blending the parts that are light. All kinds of really fun stuff. There's overlays and you can just go ahead and play around with this. These ones are really funky. We have difference. Color modes and such. I'm going to go ahead and stick with overlay for now and with this I can also change the opacity or how see-through it is and that is changing the opacity of this layer right here. Um, <clears throat> all right. Now we can also add a type layer. I'm going to go ahead and hit T or you can click on the T right here. And I can click and start typing. Now you'll see it automatically added its own layer and all of the uh, text layers are going to have this T in it so you know which ones are which. And I'm going to go ahead and put in McKinley Grove. This is where I took it at. Now up in the options bar there's all kinds of different um, options for your text. You can go ahead and select this and let's make it larger. I'm going to get my move tool real quick. Click and drag it so I can see what's going on. And then in order to keep playing with this, you remember that options bar changes with whichever tool you have open. So if I want to get those text tools up again, I need to be using the text tool. So now that I have that up, 
I can go ahead and try different fonts. I can, with some fonts there's going to be like bold and italics. This one only has this one, but you can change that if that, has, that font has the option. We also have some, you know, centering and stuff. We also have color. Um, this one has to do with warping it into different looks. So if you wanted to go with a circular look and there's a little icons next to everything to kind of show you what it's going to be doing. You can, um, under each one, there's also these tools to kind of move things around. So you can play with how that's going to look. which way it's going left and right. And these are just going to change for each one. You can just kind of play with it how you want. All right, I'm going to leave it there. And if you want to make this even larger, I'm going to go ahead and transform it. This is something we're going to use a lot. So I'm going to come up here to edit and I'm going to go to free transform. And now we have these little handles on the sides where I can go ahead and click and drag and make it as large as I want. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and hide this history panel for a second. Okay, right there in the center, looking good. I just have to hit this little check sign to say, yes, I wanna keep this. Coolio. All right. So let's say I wanted to erase a part of a letter. Before we can erase it, we have to turn it into basically an object instead of text. And we do this by what's called rasterizing the type. Once you rasterize the type though, you cannot go back in and let's say change the font because now it's an object instead of an actual, of actual text. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna right click. Oops. So you notice that there was something else came up. If I right click over here, there's different options. And if I right click on the actual text, so right click on the text, go to rasterize type. And now I cannot change the font or anything. It's just going to be it. <laughs> so um, now I'm going to use the eraser tool. I'm going to go to E. Oh, Photoshop. There we go. E and um, we have brush options that we can change the size, the hardness, and I'm gonna go ahead and just erase a little bit in here. It's disappearing into the crack. All right, and that's one way to take out um, a piece by just straight up erasing it. We're going to go into a better way in a, uh, in a couple weeks though. But anyways, let's just, you can do that for now. All right, next page, try out different fonts. I already showed you how to do that. Okay, so now we're going to fill a layer with a solid color. Um, <clears throat> So we can click on the foreground color swatch at the bottom of the toolbox to open up the color picker. So this is your foreground color, this is your background color. If I click here, we have, um, we can pick a color within here. You can move the slider up and down to pick the colors and then pick around. And go darker, grayer, lighter, super saturated. You can also, if I go out into my image, you'll see that um, I have this little like eyedropper tool that comes in. So I can actually pick, click somewhere, and it'll tell me exactly what that color is. Pretty cool. So let's say that, um, okay, yeah, let's go ahead and use this. I'm going to hit OK. And then I need to pick one of my layers that is empty because it's going to fill in this layer with that color when I hit Option Delete. All right, there it is filled in. Now, another way to do this, which I actually prefer, is to come down here to um, this little icon here. 
And we're going to go into this next week quite a bit, these different things here, these adjustment layers. But I can pick solid color and let's say I go for this brighter orange and I can hit OK. Now the big difference with this is you can see that it looks a little differently. But if I change my mind on this color, I can actually double click and then move it around somewhere else. So it is always going to be changing. And this is what I call a non-destructive layer, non-destructive edit, because you can go back and change it if you want. Okay. Oh, we're getting into this sooner than I remembered. All right. So remember when I said that, um, that there's a better way to quote unquote delete? This is it. We are going to go into layer masking. So here's my McKinley Grove layer. I'm going to click and drag this above these other layers. And now you can see because it's stacked on these other layers, you can see it over these. Now let's say I wanted to delete more of this. Instead of actually erasing it, what I can do is add a layer mask. I'm going to come down here to this icon, click here, and that adds this mask area. Now what this means, masking is kind of like, you know, if you're painting, let's say you're painting a wall in your house and there's a part you don't want to paint so you put tape over it to basically mask off that area so paint doesn't get on that area. That's kind of what a layer mask is. So I'm going to, while I have my layer mask selected, and my McKinley Grove mask, I can go ahead and paint with black. Black is going to cover, white is going to reveal. Right now this whole thing is white, so everything's being revealed. If I go ahead and paint with black, oh, I gotta go with my brush tool, hit B for brush, then it starts quote unquote erasing, but it's not actually erasing. It's just masking or hiding that area. If I switch to white, to my uh, white brush tool, and go back over it, there it is again. So if you make a mistake, you can come back and change it up. Now you'll notice this first place where I deleted, that is just deleted and gone. So I cannot bring that back. That's why deleting, in my opinion, sucks. And you should always use layer masks. So let's go ahead and let me see. Let me turn this off. And I'm going to take the opacity of this down a bit. And I'm going to make like my own little vignette by adding a layer mask to this and blocking the color from the middle. So I'm going to add a layer mask, clicking on here. I'm going to get my, I'm in my brush tool now, so I'm going to switch to black. I'm going to make my brush really nice and big by going with the right bracket key. And now I have basically made it so this area is masked out. And if you look at the layer mask, you can see that big black area. That's the part of the layer that's not being shown anymore. Okay, sweet. So that is the better way to go about it. You are going to be using masking a whole lot in this class. So get used to it. <laughs> All right, next we have duplicate layers. So if you wanted to make an exact copy of a layer, you can hit Command J. You can also click and drag a layer to the little plus sign. So let's say I needed to make a duplicate of this layer. I can click and drag it. And now you see there's two there. And because these both have this overlay option on, the overlay um, effect has intensified. I can also hit Command J. And that makes another copy. Sweet. So these are some good things to know. All right, what next? All right, so organizing your layers can be really helpful when we start getting into some really longer, intense projects um, and you need to start grouping layers together. So I can make a folder here. And let's say I want to do this, the tree bark photo. I'm going to put all the tree bark photos in here. I'm going to click on the first one. I'm going to hold down shift, click on the last one. Now they're all three selected. I can click, drag onto that. And now that there's this blue line all the way around, it will drop into there. If I went like this a little bit higher, 
and now there's only that blue line at the top, it's actually just gonna move all of those layers above the folder. That's not what I want. I wanna get it in the folder. So I'm gonna drag it slightly more down so that whole folder has the blue line around it, let go, and now it's inside of the folder. If I hit that, it kinda of hides the folder so it can clean up this area for you. If I hit the eyeball, it's gonna turn all of those off, everything that's inside of that folder. Okay, adding a drop shadow to a layer. So there's all kinds of extra stuff that we can do with pretty much everything in here. I'm trying not to overwhelm you now. But if I double click over here on the side of a layer, I'm gonna do it to my McKinley Grove rasterized text. We have a bunch of options that come up. And for today, we're just gonna worry about drop shadow. So if I click on drop shadow, you notice that a little drop shadow just came up. Now if I click on the word drop shadow, a bunch of different options come up as well. So I can change the distance from where it is from the text. The spread makes it go out darker. The size makes it bigger. All right, and we can also change where the shadow is hitting from. So if we wanna say we want it like the sun is hitting from that side or from that side or from this side, you can go any of those ways. You can also change the opacity here. Make it really dark, make it completely see-through, whatever you want. Hit OK. And if you ever need to go back and change this, all you have to do is um, double click on the drop shadow right over here and it'll bring up the exact same stuff for you. All right, put an image inside of text. So this could be really fun. I'm actually going to, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and grab one of these layers and pull it out and bring it up here. And I'm gonna close this stuff down. I'm gonna turn off these layers for now. Go back to this layer and change it from overlay to normal. Okay, now I'm going to get the type tool out. And I actually want to look for something that's kind of like a really super bold font for this. And um, I have quite a bit of extra fonts that I have bought in the past. So you might not have all of these, but look for something that's really bold looking. Okay. Oh, what's going on? What did I do here? Oh, I actually did the text box instead. So I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that layer. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna click here, click for my text. Put in McKinley Grove. Switch to my move tool, click and drag this over. Okay, and I accidentally capitalized the I, I didn't mean to do that, so I'm gonna double click on the T for um, on the layer right over here so I can get back in here and change this up. All right, so now that I have this here, we are gonna go and make sure that your type layer is directly below your photo layer. So right now my type layer is above my photo layer. I wanna click, and drag it down so it's underneath it. Now I'm going to select the photo layer and they tell you to do Command Option G. You can also right click and do Create Clipping Mask and it is clipping the photo to the text, so it's only showing where the text is showing. Pretty cool. Okay, let's turn some other stuff on. Oh, that looks pretty weird. Let's uh, double click on the side here. I wanna add a drop shadow. Oops, cancel. I need to make sure I'm on the right layer. I need to do a drop shadow on the text. All right, click on the drop shadow to get some more options going on. Okay. 
ici. All right. So pretty fun little effect that you can use for all kinds of stuff. Next, we have move the background layer, unlock it. I already showed you how to do that a long time ago already. Let's keep going. All right, so lock a layer so it won't, oh, I'm sorry, move multiple layers at once. I already kind of showed you how to do that too, right? So if I um, hold down command, I can click multiple layers. Um, I think you can click that one, and this one, and let's go ahead and click and drag. And now all three of those are going to get moved up to the very top. And there they all are. Okay, if you need to lock a layer, like you don't want it to move at all, you can click on the layer and then click on the little lock right here. And now it's locked. But you gotta remember that if for some reason you need to move it and you're like, what the heck, why is it moving? Make sure you look over here and make sure it's, uh, see if it's locked or not. And to unlock it, you just click the little lock again. Easy. All right, so now if you wanted to flatten your image and basically get rid of all of these layers, there is a way to do this. Um, now, if you just save it as a JPEG, it does it. I, I don't flatten my image very often unless it's a huge file because the bigger the file, the, more, the longer it's gonna take for Photoshop to process stuff. We will have to do this later in the semester. Um, if we come down here, we can actually see how big our document is right now it is 247 megabytes if we flatten it it'll go down to 40 megabytes so if we wanted to do that we're gonna go ahead and click here and I'm sorry right click here and then we can go to flatten image and it will completely flatten everything discard hidden layers okay and now it's down to one single layer now that's not too fun because I want to see everything you do so let's go ahead and open up your history panel click above flatten image and you can see that all of this comes up again we basically took a step back in our history panel it took us like one undo one command C another way to do something similar which I do use a lot in my work is um, is basically taking like a screenshot almost of what you've done and making a new layer from it so I'm gonna do that by doing, oh, they're telling you for merge visible. Mine is like a merge visible, but it's a stamp visible. So it's command option shift E. And now you can see right up here, it has merged all the layers together and then made it into one layer. If I turn all of this off again, you'll see it doesn't look like anything changed because this is here still. I can turn all of this stuff back on and there's all the stuff in there. Okay. If you need to rename la a layer, pretty easy. Just click where, double click on where the layer name is and I'm going to name this stamp visible because that's what I did to make it. You can rename as many of these layers as you need to. Um, all right. If you need to combine two layers into one, you can um, also do that. So let's go ahead and try that out. I'm going to turn off a couple layers. And what do we have here? Okay, so this is a blank layer here. I'm going to go ahead and click this, hold down Command, click this one. Now we can do Command E to combine those. But when you, if you saw when I combined it, it actually took away all of those options I had to change um, 
the um, it took away the options I had to change the effects. So I don't do this super often. Um, I like to keep all my layers separate so I can go back and change things as needed. So if I go back to my history channel, uh, sorry, history panel, I can go ahead and click backwards and it'll take me back to where it was before without all of this happening. Okay. So let's say I wanted to actually separate the drop shadow from a layer. I can do that too. And that could be helpful if you need to move it around, um, especially for an object, which might come in handy later on in the semester for your final project. Don't worry about that part now, but let me show you how to do this. So if we go, let's go to this text layer. It has this, um, well, it's the object layer actually, right? That has this separate drop shadow. I'm gonna come up to layer and then go to layer style. And then go down to create layer. Some aspects of the effects cannot be reproduced with layers. Uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so now I have, I don't know why it was tripping with me on that, but whatever. <laughs> and now I have um, one layer that has the white part, and then I have another layer that has the shadow. So if I decided I actually wanted to move the shadow, I can just click the layer with just the shadow, go to my move tool, click and drag it, and put it wherever I want. Sweet. You can or also organize your layers using colors. So you can do that by right clicking on a layer and then picking a color. Do this to a couple of your layers. This could come in handy later on when you're trying to organize. Um, you have a whole bunch of layers. There's some Photoshop artists that have over a hundred layers in their documents. So this could be Come in handy with stuff like that. Like let's say you wanted to affect only your shadows. You can look at which layers are all red and have the shadows or something like that. All right, lower uh, layers opacity without affecting the opacity of the drop shadow. So let's go back to this text layer. All right, and I'm gonna turn off this one for a minute. All right, and if you wanted to change the opacity of just the text without changing the opacity of the shadow, you would actually use the fill slider, which is right up here. And now it's just changing the inside fill of the text instead of the drop shadow. All right, if you wanted to sort your layers, so you wanted to just see like all of your text layers or something, you can come up here and look at the different ways that you can select. So we have them by name, effect. So let's say I wanted to see all my letters with effects, uh, drop shadow. So that's the one with the drop shadow. Modes, so these are ones with different uh, with the normal mode, let's say I wanted to say all the ones with multiply, that's the one with multiply, color, no color, I just want to see the ones with red, green, and if you're like, what the heck, why am I not seeing all of my layers? It might be because you have played with this, so if you want to go back, you can go to kind, and it's actually going to bring them all back up and reset it. Okay, so to change layers without going to the layers panel, you can hold down the command key and then click on a part of the layer. So let's say I'm gonna click over here and it's picking up that I clicked on um, this brown layer I have. If I click back over here, now it's picking up that I clicked on the text photo layer. Um, yeah, so it's a shortcut. I don't use it very often. I just usually select stuff over here. 
If you want to change the size of your layer thumbnails, you can also come in here and in the layers panel, right click on the blink area right below your background layer and then change it here. So if you want to see the thumbnails a lot larger, that can be helpful sometimes. If you wanted um, your panel to just be larger in general, you can actually come here and stretch it out. If you get really deep into Photoshop, there are some artists who work with two screens and they'll have like let's say their layers or the tools or something else on one screen and then have their main image on one big screen. So just some stuff to know about. All right, blending one photo with another. So I'm gonna go ahead and take, let's see, let's turn off all of this for a minute. And I'm going to take this photo, I'm gonna change it back to normal. I'm gonna add a layer mask by clicking on the icon. Now I'm gonna to go to my gradient tool. You can hit G or it's right here. And um, now that I have it going from black to white and I have a mask, if you, me you remember, uh, black is going to um, hide part of the image while white is going to reveal. So I can click, drag, and that's a little bit intense. Play with where it's coming through and you can see there's the black to the white. I can also start here and move to the middle there, and that's gonna give it a little bit of a different look. Okay, so you wanna do a full big gradient. Um, you can go all the way to the edge, or you can do really short ones. That's gonna do a much closer fade. All right. Okay, so now we're going to align multiple layers, and for this I'm actually going to add um, a couple more objects. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and go to our custom shape tool. I think we played with this a little bit in a previous chapter. And I'm going to pick a shape right up here. Let's see, I'm going to hit this heart. And I'm going to change the color real quick. Uh, let's try this dark green. And I'm going to take the stroke off. I don't want the stroke is a line around it, like an outline. I'm going to hit this square with the line through it for no stroke. And I'm going to click and drag to add this heart. If you want to make it a perfect heart, you hold down shift and it'll keep it constrained. All right. And now I'm going to add um, another one. I'm going to change the fill to this other green, whoops. Actually, let's go ahead and click and drag, shift, okay. Now let's change it to another green, click and drag, holding down shift, and let's change this to a yellow. All right, now I have these three different parts and they're all in their own layers. So I can actually get them to align with each other in different ways. If I click on this first one, hold down shift, click on the third one, I can come up here, <clears throat> and I'm sorry, click on your move tool, and all of these are different ways to align them. So if I click this one, they're all going to align to the side. This one's in the center. That's the right side. Okay, that's moving them proportional to each other. From the top, from their middles, from the bottoms, and then proportional to each other again. So if I wanted again perfectly in the middle together, all right, so there I went right in the middle, and then, well, let's see, first I did bottom, and then middle, and I'm actually going to move this one above here. Ah, so now we have this little effect of yellow to light green to green. Sweet. Now if I wanted to go ahead and get them all right in the center of each other, I can click on this first one, shift click on the last one, so they're all selected. They're already in the middle there. Now let's hit middle here, and now they're all straight in the middle. Nice. All right, so if you wanted to put a stroke around something in your layer, let's 
go ahead and go to this green heart and I'm going to double click on the side here and we're going to go to stroke. And now I can change the color of the stroke and I can change the size and the opacity. So right now here's the opacity here. I can make it completely dark, completely see-through. I can change the color. Let's go with like maybe a dark brownish orange. There we go. Sweet. And hit OK. And if you ever wanted to change it again, just come over here, double click on stroke, and it'll come up with the options again. Okay, well, so um, <laughs> here's a tip. I don't know why they put it at the very end, but if you want to be able to go back to re-edit a raw layer, before you hit the open image button, you can actually press and hold the shift key and it'll say that you can go to open object. Okay, that's changed a little bit. If you remember when we were in camera raw, I went to, oh, there's a little drop down next to the open and you can say open object. That will make it into a smart object. So if you want to take it back into camera raw, you can double click on the little um, layer, that'll, the little icon that's going to make there and be able to reopen it. Just an FYI. Whew. All right, so that was the end of chapter six. No, we did a whole lot of stuff. So um, before you take your final screenshot, let's go ahead and make sure that you have all of your layers open. If you, you might need to close a couple of these panels. Let's see. My, whoops. You might need to close a couple of these tab groups so I can see all of your layers. Make sure that your history panel is open and go ahead and stretch it down so I can see all of your last 30 steps. And then go ahead and take your screenshot and get it ready to turn in. Awesome. So if you had fun with this and you wanted to go ahead and save it, I'm going to go ahead and go file, save, and save my PSD. So if I don't save my PSD, then all of these layers are going to disappear. And I've been working my computer hard, so it's taken a little bit. All right, there we go. And I'm going to go whoop, chapter five and six. Redondo chapter five and six. Save. Click OK, and now I can go ahead, oh, let it finish saving, all right, let's go to File, Save As, and I'm going to go ahead and switch it to JPEG, hit Save, I'm going to take it down in size for uploading on the web. Now, you don't have to do this if you were going to take, like, uh, submit this to a print lab online to get it printed you would want to keep it as a larger file. But if you're posting it online, you want to make it a bit of a smaller file. Hit OK. And now it is, oh, I saved it as a JPEG, right? Uh, yep, very good. So now I can go ahead and close this and close this. It's gonna ask me if I want to save changes to this JPEG. I'm not gonna worry about this. I'm gonna hit don't save. All right, all done.